Good morning, little sloths. Welcome to my mukbang. I am really happy because the third floor is finally finished. Let me show you. Okay, so here's Noodle's new home with Roberto. Oh, okay, so this is the floor. Do you remember, you guys? It was green. It was green before. Now it's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is one of Orland's plants. It goes all the way up, and he's decorated. Remember this from yesterday? I showed you guys this. Well, we're decorating with all our little succulents. Hi, little sloths. I'm back in my original mukbang room, but even though this is the bedroom. And so as you saw in the little intro, the room is finally done. Now there's no furniture in here, as you saw, not even the bed. So it might be a little echoey today, but you have to make the best of what you have, what you have to make do. So, like I said, today is a requested video by lots of my Colombian friends, Colombian viewers. I don't know where you all came from. I was talking to Nadia the other day when we went to visit her and she's like, do you have a lot of people in Colombia watching you? Cause you know, that's where Orland's from. And we're like, you know, recently we've seen more comments from people saying, hello from Colombia, hello from Barranquilla, hello from Cali, hello from Bogota, hello from Medellin. And I'm like, where did you all come from? How did you guys find me? So. Today, we're having arepas con guiso. And this is freshly made by Orlin down in the kitchen. And um, one day, if you want to know the recipe, comment down below, but it's really simple. It's just tomatoes, peppers, onions, a little oil, a little salt. Okay, I know you're hungry. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I think I have five pancakes here. Oh, it's still steaming, can you see? Oh, mmm. So these are arepas. Arepas, if you guys don't know, it's basically a corn pancake. They take the corn, they flatten it up. No, corn, well, they have corn and wheat, or I don't know. It's just like two ingredients, basically. And these are fresh. These were freshly made yesterday. You see them on the side of the streets, bop, 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 bopping them into the, into the griddle, into the grill, over top of the, they do it over top of like uh, coal rocks. So it's very fresh. You can also buy them not fresh. I know you're hungry, baby. So let me first make one so noodle can be a little quiet. But yeah, they um, you can also buy these in stores and to preserve it, they just add a little sorbic acid or something. Now, guiso always tastes best with oil and salt. And I'm sure Orlin did a great job of adding it on top. Moving this down over here. How's everyone's day today? So I already have one made right here. I'm gonna make one more so I can show them to you side by side. And you know me. I'm a little sloppy sloth, so, oops, this is easier than using a knife. Ah. Okay, <sighs> very sloppy, what am I doing? Okay, so spreading this around, and Mr. Noodle is gonna have some arepa con guiso with me, so I'm gonna use my fingers because Mmm, all right, so we have the pot here. Okay, so now I have both of them. <gasps> this is arepa con guiso, it looks so good, doesn't it? I know, mmm. <gasps> Okay, Mr. Noodle, you can have some. Mm. You know, it's a very simple snack. But if you want to make it a meal, you have to eat. One time, Orlin and I, we went to like a restaurant. Oh, sorry. We went to a restaurant like down the street. And it was an arepa house. And all they do is make arepas. That's, at least that's their primary thing that they make. Wow, the buses are loud. So this was dinner time and we hadn't eaten before going. Here you go, Michelle. Oh, okay. How about you come down here? There you go. Here, I'm gonna put a little, a little arepa here for you. So Orlin has noodle now because you guys saw from yesterday, he just took over the show and you know, I am the diva in this house. Thank you very much. And um, so he's gonna feed him downstairs because sometimes, yeah. So anyways, like I was saying, we went to the arepa base. We had one and we were like, Oh my God, this is not enough. So by the time the night ended, I mean, our time there, by the time it was done, we had ordered seven. Seven arepas con guiso that we shared. And I think, yeah, this was the night of the presidential debate. And so we came home, the first presidential debate here in the United States. And um, we came home and we ate two bags of chips while watching Hillary and Trump go at it like cats and dogs. So that was my dinner that night, arepas with chips. <laughs> but seriously, this is so delicious and just, it's healthy. You know, this is one of my healthier mukbangs. Nothing's been, well, maybe the geese has been fried just a little bit, but. Mmm. It's just really nice. So, 
Mm, this is good. This is my breakfast, by the way. And I would love to know what you're eating with me, you guys. Mmm. <laughs> Noodle stand. I love this shirt, by the way. It's more than shirt. What are you wearing? Are you still in your PJs? Are you laying in bed? Is this pajama time? You know, I don't even wear pajamas anymore. I used to, I used to love, it's just too dang hot here, you know? Like, I just don't. Mm. I almost feel like I'm in a hospital or some kind of like weird prison because it's so, so white. Let me know if the light, if, if you like this or would you prefer stuff behind me? Okay, do this right now. Vote white, vote stuff. White or stuff, hashtag white, hashtag stuff. And I'll see which has the most hashtags. This is so good. Mm -hmm. Mm. You guys, so. I'm going back to the States. I'm going back to Florida. And in a matter of like eight days, nine days, crazy, I'm gone, I'm leaving. And you know, I'm doing it for the visa thing because I can't stay here for more than three months, yada, yada, yada. Um, I have to return, and there's been this whole big dilemma that's been going, like this problem that's been dancing around in my head. It's kind of been there, but you don't want to talk about it. It's been, I've known about this for a little bit, you know, a few days or a week. I've met, you know, just a few days, and it's like I'm just putting it off, putting it off. And then yesterday I was like, okay, I can't put this off anymore. So this is what's happening. Orlin's mom has relatives over, and they're taking up all the rooms, so I would have to sleep on the floor. I just, it's already very crowded there, and, you know, she preferred for me to find someplace else to go, so that's fine, you know? So, I talked to my one friend, Yvonne, and I was like, hey, you mind if I come over? Because I'm only there for like four days, and then I turn around, come right back, and I'm doing it so I can pick up my violin so that I can play violin for you guys, and also I have to get a few things in the papers, like I said, and um, it's really just for the violin, a few things from the mail and the papers. And, of course, the visa thing, so. It's a good trip, you know? Really short. Well, Yvonne, she didn't get back to me. And, um, sometimes you know, like, when someone reads an email, like, I did through Facebook and it says scene or whatever. It's just, I let you, I let you know, even though she's a great friend of mine. I love her, but I only bring this up because I, you know, I didn't hear back. So I'm, sometimes, you know, people, they don't know how to say no or they don't want to say no. And, you know, it's not necessarily her decision. You know, she has a partner. They have a house. They have eight dogs running around, you know. You know, to, hope, to just be like, oh, I'm coming up on your couch for five days. Like, let me come. You know, so. And then I called one of my other friends, Sarah. And Sarah was like, um, no, I'm sorry. You're not able to. And then, okay, this was the interesting part of the story. So my dad's brother, Uncle Skip. Skippers. He lives in Palm Beach, which is like an hour or so north of where Orland's family lives in Florida, where I lived for a little bit before moving here. And Uncle Skip, I haven't seen him since I was like 10 years old. And I've lost contact. Do you know when you're a child? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think a lot of you can relate to this, but when you're a child, your relations with your aunts and your uncles are very different than when you turn an adult and you start thinking for yourself and your mind's fully developed and you've had some life experiences and you know how to talk to people correctly. I'm still working on how to talk to people correctly. And so, ah, truck. And so I was, I was really nervous about it because I called my family. I was like, I could go to my family's house in Pennsylvania, but it costs $500 to go from Florida to there. For four days, like, I don't have that kind of money. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so. And my violence in Florida, so I need to be in Florida anyways. So my dad's like, why don't you call my brother, Uncle Skip? You know, you haven't seen him for 10 years, but this might be a good time to reconnect. And, you know, and I, I felt bad, like I felt horrible about this thing because it's like, okay, I'm only calling him up because I need something from him. I don't, oh, I don't like that. You know, with like my friend Yvonne, you know, how are you doing, how's the hurricane? Or how are you doing today? I always bring her coffee. You know, she's like a part of my life, my friend Yvonne. Whereas Uncle Skip is not a part of my life, even though he's family, I mean, Yvonne's not family. I'm closer with Yvonne than Uncle Skip, which just sounds crazy, but I was a child 
when Uncle Skip was around visiting for Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter, back when we all used to live together near Washington, D.C. And then we all split up. He moved to Hawaii, we moved to Pennsylvania, he moved to Florida, we've never seen him. So I was just very, it was this awkwardness inside me, and, you know, and like, from the time that I last saw him till now, I had come out of the closet, I've had relationships, I've traveled around the world, like, I feel like such a different person, you know? Like, just, I'm thinking, like, does he even know that I'm, you know, G-A-Y? I don't even know. Probably, you know. He has, he saw all the signs when I was a kid. Wow, I'm blabbing. But, is this a good story? So I gave him a call, and I was so nervous, my heart was pounding, like, oh my gosh, I'm upset. I finally got in touch with him. By the way, you can call people internationally, if you come from the States and you have, I don't know how it works, your email was formed in the United States. Well, anyways, I just use Google, Google Hangouts, Google Hangouts, and I type it in, and I plug in his phone number, and it calls for free, and you just talk to your computer. So I called him. It took a while for him to answer because all these, you know, it's like 5002, it's like 15 numbers that make no sense, and caller ID unknown. So he finally picked up, and it was just like, oh, hey, well, he's going to a reunion up north. I think he said Connecticut. And so I was like, no, where am I going to go? And then I thought, you know, I thought about looking at a hotel or a motel because my flight goes to Fort Lauderdale and Orland's family lives like West Palm Beach area. And I'm like, maybe there's a hotel in Fort Lauderdale, maybe West Palm Beach, maybe Lake Worth, maybe Green Eight, maybe like uh, Lackahatchee, all these little towns around. Oh my gosh, the cheapest one's like $89 a night. And it's like two stars and cigarette smoke and broken doors and like bad reviews and... Oh, you know, I can't be picky, but I don't have a car. So I'm like, even if I got a hotel and I paid $500 for five nights, well, yeah, five nights, six days, five nights. It's like, how would I get my food? Where would I go? How would I get around? So I thought about my parents, Orleans family, my uncle, my friend Sarah, my friend Yvonne. Hotel. I've thought of all the options. I'm like, I'm gonna be sleeping in the airport for five days. My muck moms? I'm going to be airport, airport food for the next five days. The hotels are too expensive. I can't lease a car. I don't think I'm old enough. I'm 24. I think you have to be like 25 or 26 to lease a car. Correct me if I'm wrong. Look at me. I'm being polite with the fork. Mm, it does seem very echoey in here. I hope you guys don't mind, but you know, Trisha Pages, Trisha Potatoes, she'll sit on her kitchen floor and it's echoey and I don't think anyone really cares. <laughs> so, that's been on my mind, like where do I go? I contacted my friend Chris, well Orland's friend more so than mine, but you know, I was introduced to her through him. And um, she's a mango farmer in Delray area and I've gone to her place before to help work and stuff, but you know, we sent her an email, a thing on Facebook, and um, she says it, it, it should be okay. So, luckily, I have somewhere to go. But the food, it now, you know, this is a blessing in disguise because, let me tell you. Mmm. I really feel like that I should have made the recipe. I mean, though, to me, it's so simple. Tomatoes, onions, garlic, onion, salt, oil, fry it, done. You know, this is like a traditional exotic thing to all my American viewers, you know? I never knew what an arepa was until I met Orlin. And now, his mom will go crazy to buy an arepa at, at the El Bodigon, and they'll charge like $3 for a packet of three. And here, they're like, <laughs> two for a dollar, three for a dollar. It's very, very cheap, you know? <clears throat> it's just corn and flour, like I said. Oh. I read the con guiso. Yay. Hey. Hello there. Hey baby. Hi. Hello there. So I was giving Noodle cheese. Like cheese, like a little bit of soy cheese. He hates it, so I brought it to you. Oh. Um, soy cheese. <laughs> mm, from my scramble. No, from the grilled cheese yesterday. How many liked my grilled cheese yesterday? It was delicious. So, um, oh, are you eating your food? I am. People love it when you come in. Oh, what part of the movie? This is like 10 minutes in. Comment if you're happy that Orland's here. Yay, the best part of the show. 
Okay, oh, bring up a chair. There's a chair downstairs. No, I'm fine. No, please. Then you can put half your butt here. Up. We're, we're both skinny. We can both come. <laughs> and if we go down, the table will go down. It's fine. No, 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 no. Seriously, I'm just being funny. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna fit. Yes, you would. Circulation. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> um. Oh. I love it when you come. Thank you. Okay, so it's a blessing in disguise, like I said, because my friend Chris, you know, I was like, what am I going to do for food? I have no car. Well, she lives like in walking distance of Walmart. This is like, this got made before my eyes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here, make one more and we'll show to the, to, to the screen. Okay. Yeah, make one more. You're a good maker. So anyway, she lives in walking distance of Walmart. This is perfect. So I'm going to do a Walmart mukbang while I'm there. You know, I don't have my laptop. I don't know. Excuse me, how I'm gonna upload. I'm, it's gonna be like a four day, five, six day break. I'm gonna make like an extra one or two here just so I have it in stock so it's not that long of a break. Maybe two days of break. But yes, I'm gonna do a Walmart mukbang. So please comment down below and let me know if there's any food from Walmart that you want me to do. I already know I'm gonna do a hummus and bread mukbang. Oh, I love hummus. Oh, with olives on top. I love Kalamata. garlic hummus and and barbecue chips, like junk food. <gasps> Ooh, Lay's barbecue chips. Junk food. And maybe I could get like a cheap rice cooker there so I can, you know, eat something else besides junk. You know, something healthy, you know, like just rice. <laughs> or potato. You know, you can make a lot of things in the rice cooker. Potatoes, vegetables, soups, stews. Orleans, you did such a nice job. Okay, here. You hold yours up. I hold mine up. Oh. <laughs> Do you want any? You know, I just ate with noodle. I was eating fruits, bananas, with noodle. Fruits and bananas. Oh, yeah. Noodle fruits are bananas. Bananas are fruits. Noodle needs his fruits or he's going to become obeso like me. Yeah, he likes fruits. <sighs> no, he's picky. He will prefer. He likes bananas, but he doesn't really like like watery fruits. But he does like um, bell peppers, uh, hot peppers, and tomatoes. I can't wait to do my Walmart mukbang. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to empty out the Walmart. It's going to be the highlight of my trip. So, um, when he goes to Walmart, well, when we used to go to Walmart, we would always get hummus, but we would get like olive hummus, garlic hummus, and artichoke, oh, artichoke hummus is good. Mm -hmm. And it is really good. And we would also get uh, tortillas, they have like some tortillas. We would make burritos. Oh, oh. Hummus and that's, that white soft tortilla is the best combo, especially if you like, Ah, uh, so good. If you add like some barbecue chips into the burrito thing with the hummus, and mm -hmm. it's really good. <laughs> We're fantasizing over food. I know, we can't get that stuff here. Mm -hmm. We can't get like hummus, like they make hummus here, it's like a million dollars, but also it doesn't taste as good as the cheap one from Walmart. I know, Walmart, 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 Walmart. They have hummus for like two or three dollars, and it's so good. Like there's, oh, I think noodles being bad. Uh oh. Yeah, it's outside. That's outside. I'm like, what is noodle shoveling? <laughs> are they spray painting washing machines today? I hope not. <laughs> oh, it died. We are squeezing on one chair. How many of you are sharing a chair with someone? Comment down below. No one. And say hashtag shared sloth. <laughs> shared sloth. <gasps> no one's sharing their chairs. Mm -hmm. So, no. What are you going to do when I leave? Um, feed noodle, feed noodle. Feed Roberto. Feed yourself, hello. Feed myself and Noodle. Clean. 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 A lot of cleaning. <laughs> Did so much cleaning. I'll help you clean before I leave. I am the maid. This floor You're is beautiful. The maid? Yes. <laughs> he thinks I'm a bad maid. But sometimes I'm a lazy maid. He's the lazy maid and he's the lazy maid that complains. <laughs> oh. And the other mukbang, a lot of you guys were giving Orlin a hard time, like... Ooh, he's so mean. Ooh. No, no, no. You don't see what happens off camera. I deserve a lot of this stuff. This guy's... Mm. Yeah. I'm lazy. You know, when you're in a relationship for many years, you relax. All sides of your personality are exposed. You get the good and the bad, and the bad is there a lot more than it was at first. If you've been married for 10 years, you know. Relationships aren't easy. Yeah. And this is a lot of queso. It's not enough queso. I didn't actually add that much oil to this, so it's actually not that unhealthy. Yeah, I was gonna say, does this have like oil or salt? I didn't even taste that much salt. Barely anything. This is healthy. 
Well, salt's not unhealthy, but large amounts of salt. Large mean, amounts of salt is bad. Then you get, like, yeah, small amounts is good for you. Oh, we, we yeah, salt. we need salt. We need salt. Or else we go crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to make it healthy. It was just uh, tomatoes, onion, blindness. What do I look like with Orland's glasses? Dr. Swayze. Dr. Swayze in the house, Dr. Swayze. Um, how many of you like his glasses? I love his glasses. It's about time you got new ones. Too. Well, the funny story is that my old glasses snapped in half because I sat my big booty on them. <laughs> and I went to get new ones, but what? they were very expensive. So I'm like, hmm, how about this frame looks like it fits? So they took out the lenses from my old glasses and stuck them into this ones. And then they kind of super glued it in so they don't fall off. It was a great idea. <laughs> Saved a bunch of money. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Are you full already? I'm getting there, surprisingly. See, I thought five was enough. Full of a rip, but not full full. You know, sometimes you're sick of a food, but it doesn't mean you need to stop eating. Like, you're eating your bag of chips, you get sick of the chips, your thumbs start bleeding. You talk too much. But then, if you somebody pulled out a nice sandwich or a pizza, you're like, okay, give me... You could actually make a pizza with a red pot, couldn't you? Mmm. You could. It'd be so How many guys want a pizza mukbang? Recipe. Recipe and mukbang. We'll show you how to make the dough and everything. Because we have an oven now. We do. Mmm. I think we could make an a red pizza, though. We've made one for... Remember that ASMR fail I did? Oh, but did you ASMR like that? ASMR fail. Did you like that? It was delicious. It was made... It was an a with hummus on top. It was pita bread with hummus on top. Pita bread with hummus. Remember? Now this goes to the Walmart brand, though. It yeah. doesn't cost a million dollars, though. Like yes, it's, it's like half a million. <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive. It's not a typical food. And they sell you, it's not the fact also that it's expensive, it's the fact that it's like, there's, you, you saw it, it was like a little grass, glass light bulb container. It looks like a light bulb. Mm. It's mm. like this much hummus for like eight, nine dollars. No, but the hummus you got for that ASMR was like a round well, I made plastic that. one. I made that myself. Oh, that's right, you made that. Homemade hummus. hummus. I made the hummus myself. Duh. What if you guys saw the ASMR? We can't buy hummus where we live. We have to drive seven hours to buy hummus, okay? Not even exaggerating. Mm. So, anyway. Mm. Yeah, so have hummus and avocado and tomato. Yeah. This mukbang is all about food today. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Did you eat all your pizza? Okay, good. Mm. Last night, I had the weirdest dream. Oh, what? I don't remember. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird that I can't even remember it. Mm. Too weird. Have any of you ever heard of um, a dream diary? Oh, I used to have that. I always just write down my dreams. Yeah. And then it's, and You're supposed to write down this. Ouch. Sorry, my leg. That's the minute you can remember. Ow. Oh. Circulation? No, no. <laughs> All the aches and pains. My old man. My, my bone's popping out of my hip. It's like displacing. Dislocating. Dislocating. <laughs> um, yeah, so the thing is you're supposed to write as soon as you wake up. I never do that though. He does have a diary though. One time, like, he told me to, told me to look through his what diary. On your, oh, my phone. On, your, on his iPhone, he writes down like... Reminders. No, no, this is what he does. Military book bag. Food. Water. Can of soda. Fork. Spoon. That was from like two years ago. Feeling that. hungry. <laughs> I know, one time he went through my Green wall. I know, these reminders. He's like, why did you write these? I'm like, I know what they mean. <gasps> my aunt Trisha, my mom's sister, or then loves Trisha, don't you? I love Trisha. She's a very sweet woman. She, um, she loves to write herself reminders on sticky notes. Oh, oh I guess so. So they're sticky notes. Barata. Um, them all over Oh my gosh, she walks into her house in her kitchen. There's, it's like the walls are yellow, but not because there's paint. It's because there's sticky notes all over them. And they're reminders from like five months ago, and she won't take them down when she's done. She needs to get a phone like me so she can write down like, cat litter, roof chimney fix, hello. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever. Sticky notes. No, sticky notes are good for learning languages. Mm. You can put the Spanish word next to the English word next to the item. Oh, I did that at your house when I first moved in. Yeah. 
And it didn't work because you didn't really look at them. No, that's not true. I remember some words. Specifically, Aramano. What? Shelf. Arman. Armario. Armario. Say, I knew. And Dora Puerta. <laughs> mm, that's all I remember. A lot of the time they would end up on the floor. No, no. The same. <laughs> <laughs> I love your laugh. <laughs> yeah, this is this is why Noodle laughs that way. You guys saw yesterday this creepy laugh. <laughs> I do a lot of cackling randomly. Like sometimes I'm watching my my cartoons. I watch anime, and I just start laughing really loud, and Noodle just laughs with me. Oh, you want? Ooh, the scrunchies. You like? Mmm. Did you notice something special about one of the Europas? No. I fried one of them. You did? Which one? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't fry it enough though. I want it to be crunchy, 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 we can, we're gonna use this later for maybe you want ramen later? Ramen. Mm. Yeah, ramen with gizo tastes really good actually. Gizo is great with pastas. Ramen is a lifesaver. Oh, Yesterday, you guys saw. Ramen? At the good. very end of the mukbang, I was like, ah, I need more food. We love it. It's ramen. the best thing because it's fast, it tastes good, it's cheap. It has it's such healthy. a great consistency and it's so long. Mm. They're so long and they absorb sauces so well. I want to make cheesecake. 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 How do we make that? We need to do like we will need like a million nuts. Oh my god. Avocado. The cheesecake was one of my this is a foodie mukbang. I mean I could make that mac and cheese thing, but the thing is that when you cook nuts in the oven, sometimes they taste the same as they're raw, but sometimes they change flavor and not in a good way. Oh. It's like we would have to experiment a lot. Yeah. I had a raw cheesecake a long time ago. You did? Yeah. Where? At a raw food restaurant. Oh, how much was it? A million dollars? <laughs> Probably like seven dollars for a slice. Oh, like a slice this big? But that's a million dollars to us now. It makes a lot of sense. And um, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> Orlin's creeping. Me? You're creeping on me. I like seeing you. This is his sick pleasure. How many of you are in a relationship and you'd love to see your partner eat? I love to see him eat. Especially when we're on our diets. I'm a feeder. But especially when we're on our diets. When I go through, when I went through my little phases, I'd be like, eat this, I can't have it, but I want to watch you eat it. And I would just, oh, oh yes, does it taste good? Oh, it's bad. We have mental problems. This was delicious. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Marlon made it for me. I really appreciate that. So, what else is on my mind? Food. All right, I'm going to go because Noodle seems to be eating something. <laughs> I shouldn't. We're here. Oh! I do it all the time, Orlin. Oh my gosh. You she see, she see yeah. what happened? It's okay. The camera's. It's, it's only $700. I know. Oh. Okay, can you move it a little closer now? Oh my gosh, you guys. This has happened in like seriously five mukbangs. Can you turn it just a little this way? How's everyone doing? No, no, the, not the, the stand. The. No. <laughs> okay, stop. No. This. The, Thank you. Okay. Orlin brought me a special surprise. Nachos! So this is not really a breakfast food, but I want to finish the guiso. Got my arepas out of the way. And this is going to be a loud ending to the month. Oh, you can't even see, can you? That's good. Just, just a little bit for now. You know. mm. Oh, they taste so good on their own. No, I have to be careful with chips because they make my, my gums blue. You know, I keep having songs in my head. But you know, when you get a good song in your head, you get a good song in your head. Mmm. You know, I have trouble with crossing my legs. You saw the little camera, but, well. So you guys, when I was in middle school, 
sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. You know, those were happy times, but really terrible times. <laughs> Middle school was awful for most people. You know, when your ch body changes and you're going through puberty and like you don't know who you're friends with and you don't. Very confusing time. You know, I was confused about whether I liked girls or boys. It just. But something that I was true to was my love for music. And I loved chorus. And I have to admit, you know, usually kid choirs and kid choruses. They're not that good, you know, yeah, it's okay. But we had a really good music instructor. He was a little cocky, a little full of himself. He was funny. Some people, he was one of those guys that you like, you really enjoyed or you just couldn't stand. I liked him <clears throat> and I thought he was talented too. So, um, watch, he's gonna watch this and be like, whoa, you remember. But you remember all your teachers. I'll be sitting down in my bed one day and I'll be like thinking of Mrs. Wagner from sixth grade language arts. Or I'll be, or Mr. Reese who taught me math and oh, I can't stand him. Or you have like, you know, you remember all your teachers. Like they really leave an impression on you. Like there's this one quote, I don't know how the quote goes, but it's basically ah, explaining that to you. <laughs> teachers leave a handprint on students. It's the same way when you step on wet cement. It's so impressionable and it's gonna be there forever. And it's true. That's why they say like kids, parents need to really watch what they say or what you expose them to because that really dictates a lot of their being, their existence on this planet. Like how you're gonna perceive things, perceive things, how you're gonna feel. What you're gonna feel is right and wrong. Like it's so important, you know? But anyways, I loved chorus and it was very, it was good. It was pretty good sounding. When I joined, well, I had an audition. So chorus is mandatory. All sixth, seventh, and eighth graders have to do it. And they have sixth grade chorus, seventh grade chorus, eighth grade chorus. Well, they also have seventh and eighth grade. They combine the two grades for show choir. Show choir is like the elite, the fancy ensemble. And it's like, you know, 10 boys minimum for bass, 10 boys minimum, I mean, maximum for tenor, 10 girls for alto, 10 girls for soprano. Very small, like a 40 people max. When you had an audition, and I audition, you know, my voice, as you know, is not very good. Um, but for some reason, maybe it's because my voice hadn't cracked, and I kind of still sag like up here. But um, I got accepted. That was very really cool. Not like there was much competition, because boys aren't really likely to try out for that anyways. It's like when I did Irish step dancing. Once you get to a certain level, boys compete against boys, and girls compete, as, compete against girls. And there's always five times more girls than boys for Irish dancing. You know, river dance. Da, 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 da. I talked about that at Nadia's house, I know. But, um. Mm. I would always come in first place. Always. I mean, sometimes I got second, but that was rare. On all my. They're called feshes, fesh, which is like a competition. But the thing was, there was little competition for me. So. Whereas the girls, it's like, okay, you're competing against 50 girls right now. For me, first, second, third, fourth place, well, there's only six of us competing for that, so my chances are higher. So that was kind of the same, the same thing for uh, show choir. But you know, those were the happy moments of my middle school life. Because um, most of the time in middle school, people were making fun of me. People were pushing me up against walls. People were stealing my books. People were calling me lots of terrible names and it was, it was hard, you know. I remember coming home from school one day. And I was sitting on my mom's lap and crying in the chair. And she, she was fed up with the bullying. And I, you know, we were in and out of the principals all the time. And she's like, do you want to change schools? She was willing to like, have me go to a special school. And I said, no. I think I said, I mean, obviously I didn't change schools, so I guess I said no. But it must be hard for a parent to see that your child's picked on just for the stupidest things. Or they're picked on for non-stupid things too, like part of their character is a little messed up, you know, kids are still crazy and bad. Um, so, you know, I'm very thankful for Mr. Dickinson. Oh, that name right there, you know, kids are making fun of right there. Um, you know, I'm thankful for being a part of show choir and having chorus and having an orchestra. You know, there's so many kids out there that 
aren't able to play violin or any string. There's no orchestras in half the middle schools and high schools around the country, the United States at least. It's crazy, you know, because that, that brings joy. You know, music unites all of us, no matter our religion, ethnicity, color, diet, you know, anything. Like music, we all feel the same way. Obviously, there are exceptions, but when you hear a sad song, most people feel a sense of sadness. When you hear a happy song, most people feel a sense of happiness. So it's a beautiful, it just, that's why art is important, and it's just so underrated. Oh, it's just fairy, la la, oh, it's just liberal, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. It's part of being alive. Music. How many of you agree with me? Mm. Same with high school. Now, high school got a little better from the teasing and stuff, but... And then when high school happened, I started to act up myself. Middle school, well, I did act up a little bit in middle school, but really middle school was me getting hit. Physically, me mentally, verbally. <laughs> that, that soft cement, that imprint that's forever there. And then my way of dealing with it once I got to high school, not all the years, but there are many cases where I would fight back and I would bully the bully back, like a, a self-defense thing, you know? And so there, you know, like I said, having the orchestra was one of my favorite things, but by high school came along, I just got super cocky. I got super full of myself and I, I said me things. I did, I did some really, you know, just not, just unacceptable stuff to other people. I would say things. But so then I became the bully in high school. Then once college came around, then it was like a fresh start. Excuse me. But you know, I wish there was a button right here that I could press. And I wish that, that I could just <laughs> go back and experience a show choir concert. Eighth grade show choir or chorus. Or in high school, I wanna go back and repeat my district PMEA concert where I was first chair of the second violins and I was principal chair and I had my solo. Did I even have a solo? I don't remember. Um, you know, where I won first place and there I was making beautiful music and just felt... <sighs> you know, I really, I really miss it. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I feel so sad. Well, I'm getting, um, I'm getting my violin when I go back to Florida, you know, so I want to be able to play for you guys. This bug bug sucks now. <laughs> oh, God. What is in here? <laughs> um, yeah, I miss, I miss those days. Wow, I am like a hamster or a rat. You know, which, which pets make a mess? Birds? Bunnies? Like, <laughs> I just... <laughs> you guys, oh my gosh, well, I'm gonna get going. And I'm gonna go downstairs and put on some music. What did I play that I loved? Um, Serenade for Strings, um, Tchaikovsky, Symphony Number no. 4, Finale. Da, 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 is that number four? I don't even remember. Um, something beautiful. Oh, Magnum Mysterium. That was a com that was arranged by Dr. Dachau of the Hershey Symphony, and there I was playing it under the spotlight. And <sighs> I'm gonna go listen to good music right now, and you know, just feel better. You know, music is so great. That's that's why I start a lot of my mukbangs with a good song. You know. <clears throat> So anyways, thanks so much for eating with me. I'm sorry that the ending was really strange. I did not know that would happen. But um, if you liked it overall, if you liked seeing Orlin, if you want me to do um, a Dorepo recipe, then just let me know. I just feel this weirdness, you know. 
I will, I'll show you. It's very easy. It's just tomatoes. <laughs> wow, what's wrong with me? And, well, maybe you should give this a thumbs down. Give this a thumbs down. Um, and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Lots of stories, lots of stuff to tell you guys. There's more on my mind, trust me. It's always working. And thanks so much for keeping me company. And I really appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow.